This is beeswax that I rendered from my own old comb, and this is wax that was rendered by a friend and sent to me. I'll show you how I made this and how I used this. This is a lot of mess, old comb that I've put together. It's got some water in it, and I'm heating it up, trying to melt all the wax. We're gonna try to filter it and save the wax. This is an example of how some of the wax will look some of it's nice and clean. Other bits are, this is some that has been melted before. I'll throw that in in a little bit. But a lot of it is just scraped off of the frame and stored in these bags in the freezer. Now why would I put it in the freezer? A lot of these wax combs end up with high beetle larva or wax moth larva or other little pests. The freezer will kill it. It's a very nice way to store it. If I stored this in an open space, like on my back porch or in my shed, the wax moth would get in there and eat this up and I would just have a mess. So the freezer is just a nice place to store it until I'm ready to melt it. While that's all heating up and melting, I'm gonna start another batch that is good clean wax. A buddy of mine online, Mr. Jeffrey Tipton, was very kind and sent to me a bunch of rendered wax. Now, what I need to do with this, looks like a big piece of cheese, doesn't it? it smells good. What I need to do with this is put a layer of wax on my new frames. The bees will accept these new frames a lot better when there's a good layer of wax on them. So we're going to play around with how to apply that today, but first I gotta get this melted. We're gonna do it on a low heat because I don't want it to burn up. I just want it to melt slowly. This one sounds like it's boiling. Let me give that a good stir again. I think it's about ready to pour through my screen. We may have to do this batch several times, but we need to get some of this large junk out of it. I have rigged up another large pan and just some aluminum window screen. I don't know how well this is gonna work, but we're gonna to try to pour that through this. Everything liquid, the wax and the water, is gonna go through, and it, of course, anything smaller than the holes. And then the large stuff will be caught. We'll let it cool, throw that away, and then see what we have in the lower pan. We'll put this lid over on this pan, helping it to melt. And we'll see if we can get this. Let me go ahead and turn this burner off. Save some of that propane. Now, this is likely to make a mess. lost a little bit over here. I poured too much too fast. But we'll let that settle and this cool. Once that becomes hard enough, you know, after it's cooled off, we'll just get rid of this and see what's in the pan below. I've added a little bit more of the wax. This is continuing to melt. Hold on a second. That's why we have gloves. This is continuing to melt on a low heat. It's looking very nice. I put an extra block in there. Also, this is cooling down. Probably just about ready for me to take all of that off so I can strain new. Let me go ahead and do that. I cut the window screen off so I wouldn't be messing up the whole roll. Let me just take these clamps off. Thank you. 
Still a little bit of wax dripping through there. Now there is still some wax in this. It's not very much, but there's still some. I could add it back to the pot, let it boil and, and re-pour it. But I think at this point, just for the sake of the experiment, um, I'm gonna let that part be waste and I'm gonna just dump it out here on the ground. I'll clean that up after the chicken scratch through it. Put this back on here. We're about ready to pour a new batch. This batch should have a lot more wax in it than the previous batch. And uh, I think I'm about ready to pour it off. There's one large clump of wax in the middle that I'm waiting to melt. You can see that right there. Look at that. That's one that I had tried to process before. So I'm going to let that melt. When that part is completely melted, we'll pour this over. We've now done our third batch in here. It's, it seems to be working pretty well. I'm getting a lot of the wax out of it. It's staying hot in this clump long enough for the wax to fall down through. As I manipulate the screen a little bit, it falls through a little easier. I'll just let that sit. And back up here, continue. We'll continue heating this until we can pour it through. Now we're going to take some of this clean wax and try to apply it to the frames. Now just today I went down and bought this paint roller. I think I may have purchased the wrong roller because people say foam and this is nappy, but we're going to see if we can make it work. These are clean new frames. This is the plastic deep frames from Man Lake. They have a cell size of 4.9 millimeter, which is why I want them. I want to encourage my bees to have smaller cells, but I do need the wax on there. So we're going to try this. We're going to just dip this in here and get it soaked. And just spread it around. Now I have heard you don't want too much but having never done this personally, I'm not entirely sure what too much would be. So I'm just gonna put one good roller on there and it looks like it's gonna be a good layer. Soak my roller again, come down here. Turn that over, roller soaked again. could even do two rollers per side and get it really nice. Once I get one coated, I'll store it over here in my high butler tote so that it can cool off. I think I will do that. Just go back in for a second roll. Just like that. That looks like that looks like it's gonna be perfect. We'll lay two at a time out here on my little metal tabletop. I've heard some people actually dip these frames in a big vat of hot wax. I don't have anything that big, so I'm just going to use the roller method. This looks like it's working out pretty well. Yeah, I think two rolls. I'm saying all this out loud because like I said I'm experimenting so it looks to me like two rollers is going to be just right. High Butler boxes have proven to be very, very useful in, 
and versatile. This is an example of what I'm hoping to accomplish. This is the uh, a big chunk of wax that Jeffrey Tipton sent me. So big thank you to Jeffrey for that. The little chunks that came with it was enough to do 20 frames of waxing, which was perfect. I'll put this away for another day and hopefully we can get something out of what I just did today. So the final step, now that everything is, is hot, poured into one container, it's still liquid, I'm gonna pour it into this uh, flexible bucket with water in the bottom. I'm gonna just pour this into the water. how pretty that is in there. Here's a pro tip. Yes, this is an experiment for me, but this is something that I know for sure. Guys, don't use utensils and pots and pans that your wife likes. I'm just saying it'll make your life better if you use old stuff that she doesn't care about. One step you didn't get to see was after we poured the wax into the cold water, I let it sit for a while and then I rinsed it out to get all the dirty water out of it boiled it again, poured it through the screen one more time, and then let it cool. It turned out to be beautiful, but it has a lot of trash on one side, so we're gonna rinse that off. Not completely clean, but a lot cleaner. There's a good layer of trash removed. If you have tips and tricks on how to make this even cleaner, I would love to read that in the comments below. Remember, everyone has a story and every story counts. Thanks for being a part of my story and letting me be a part of yours. I'll talk to you soon.